go. All right, we are recording this for those who cannot make the session today. Um, hi, I'm Eli Gane, the state librarian. Today I'm joined by Dale Savage, the Development Bureau Chief. Um, and we have other development staff members here as well, including Carmelita Aragon and Patricia Moore. And today we are talking about the ARPA grant for public and tribal libraries. So thank you all for coming. Um, there will be a chance to ask questions at the end. Um, so I'll go through this relatively quickly and then we'll have time for Q&A at the end here. All right, so um, ARPA funds were received from the IMLS um, from the federal government to be used in, federal, in helping communities respond directly and immediately to the impact <clears throat> sorry, to the pandemic, as well as to the related economic and community needs through equitable approaches. So that's the, um, the source of this funding. Uh, each state library received ARPA as part of their LSTA fundings. It's a, it's a supplement to the LSTA. And each state library is approaching um, how they use their ARPA funds in a, in a different way. In... Uh, New Mexico, our approach is to pass through almost all of the funding to you all to spend as you see fit to meet local needs. So the IMLS named three priorities. The first priority is digital inclusion. The second is emergency relief. Uh, so this is targeted at pandemic and health issues. And then the third, which is uh, you'll notice is very broad, is to support library services that meet the needs of communities. So if you were under the impression that ARPA funds could only be used for digital inclusion or health purposes, please note the third one, which is very broad. Um, here's the federal source. And we are managing this grant under administrative code uh, 4.5.9, I believe that's a typo. Um, uh, Dale, could you put in the link to, to the appropriate NMAC? Apologies for typos. Um, and we recently had to amend that NMAC this year to allow us to pass through as much money as we wanted to pass through to you. So previously, 4.5.9 only allowed us to pass through up to 25% of federal funding. So um, we went through the process of amending that NMAC to give us more flexibility to give subgrants to you all. <clears throat> so uh, you all will be uh, you all should have already received grant agreements by email. Um, there is a 60-day deadline to return those grant agreements. And any unsigned agreements, uh, we will reallocate that money elsewhere. So the 60-day point, um, we're going to call March 28th. So I believe that's a Monday. On Monday, March 28th, we're going to look and see which grant agreements we um, have already received. Those we have not received, we will consider uh, past the deadline and we will reallocate that funding. Um, obviously, if 60 days is a problem for you, please do reach out and let us know. Thanks, Dale, for putting that in the, the chat. Um, you have from today, you have until uh, September 30th, to spend the funds. So that's the end of the federal fiscal year, September 30th. So by my calculation, um, if you receive your checks here in the coming days, and hopefully it won't take too long once we get those grant agreements back for you to have the money in hand, you'll have about eight months to spend the money. Uh, we are going to ask you, and we'll talk a little bit a little bit more about this in a few minutes here. We're going to ask you to track your spending. 
um, and track it uh, separately. Uh, Donovan, I note your your um, comments, and we're um, already in discussion with you about that. So we'll keep discussing that issue. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, we were going to ask you to track your your ARPA spending separate from your other spending. And uh, on October 15th, we're going to ask you to provide us with your spreadsheets um, in which you have tracked all of your ARPA spending. Um, note that this time period will straddle two annual report years. So for the FY22 annual report, you will spend you will report all of your ARPA spending on that. If you don't spend your money until after FY22, which would be um, uh, starting in July 1st, then you would also report that on the following annual report. So as long as you keep that spreadsheet up to date, it should be really easy to, uh, to do all the reporting you need to do. Um, if you have not encumbered or spent all of your grant funds, uh, then we're going to ask them to be returned to us by October 30th. Next slide. So eligible expenditures will follow, um, essentially follow state grants and aid protocols. So what you're used to with state grants and aid, uh, you can expect that you'll get the same answers to your eligibility questions. So that includes uh, staff salaries, training, equipment, program materials and supplies, um, operational expenditures, um, library materials, uh, we are already fielding a lot of questions about what counts, so keep the questions coming. If we don't know the answer, then we can uh, try to seek out an answer for you. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, ineligible expenditures. And I'll just note that um, because we don't normally pass through federal funding, um, the last couple of years have been a special case. Um, you all might not be aware that the way the expenditure eligibility works is that the federal government has um, certain eligible expen uh, expenditures and the state has its own set of eligible expenditures. Um, ours can be more, res more restrictive than the federal rules. So if you um, looked up the federal uh, eligibility expenditures um, guidelines, then you might see something that is more expansive than what we have here. They might, for instance, allow food. <clears throat> um, but when our rules are more restrictive, then it goes by our rules. We just can't be more expansive than the, we can't be more expansive than the, the federal government. So we do not allow uh, expenditures on food, giveaways, indirect administrative expenses, indirect costs, or capital improvements. So I know one of the questions we've been getting a lot is what counts as a capital improvement. Um, furniture, for example, is allowed as long as it's furniture for um, the public use. That includes things like, um, like a circulation desk. However, if it's built in, then it becomes a capital improvement. We've also seen questions about um, air filtration systems. Um, as long as those are not permanent structures, as long as they're not permanent improvements to the buildings, then um, that would fit the criteria for this grant. And again, any questions, just, um, just ask if you're at all nervous. All right, so I'm going to ask Dale to talk about the expenditure tracking sheet, which you would have received along with your grant agreement. Dale? Okay, and Eli, while I'm doing that, there are a couple of uh, couple of questions in the chat. Uh, everyone should have gotten uh, an expenditure tracking sheet with your uh, grant agreement packet. And if you'll notice, there's a couple of features about them. Uh, one is there are locked fields on this uh, spreadsheet, and that's actually built to help you out. Uh, this is a slide, so it's not live, but if you go to play around with the sheet, you'll notice 
if you enter an amount uh, for like an expenditure in column G, it'll automatically deduct that amount from your uh, from the total of your grant. So that anytime you can just take a look at the top of the sheet and you will have a running total of how much money you've got left in your grant. Uh, and it'll also show you your expenditures to date. Uh, another feature that you'll have in the uh, spreadsheet is expenditures will be listed by eligible categories and that's a drop down. So you won't be typing anything in, you'll just select. And so there's sort of the base, basics, uh, library collections, staff salaries, uh, staff professional development. And then there's a, uh, a place for other operating operational expenditures. And what you can't see there, but if you click on it, uh, associated with delivery of services to the public. And then there's a spot for multiple categories. And then over in column H, if you've got multiple or other categories, you have an area where you can list the items that are purchased. And you also have a justification. If there's something that's not particularly clear or you think may not be clear, uh, then you can add an explanation in column I for how does this expenditure supplement, encourage, or support public library services. So I think that, you know, the sheet should be pretty explanatory, but if you haven't opened yours up yet, open it up and just make sure that your library name is actually up in that top row because I customized each of those as we sent them out to you. Uh, and also make sure your sheet's locked that basically you can't click in that green area or down below and uh, because those should be locked for automatic calculations. And if there's a problem with your sheet, let me know and, and I'll uh, get you a better sheet. And Eli, that's all I've got unless somebody's got a question on it. Sorry, I have Sorry, to find my unmute button. button. Yeah. Um, let's see, there's a question. Do you just need the expenditure sheet back or copies of invoices and payments as well? Unless we ask you for invoices, um, all we're going to ask to see at this point uh, is the spreadsheet. Uh, and as Eli said, when June 30 comes, you'll report whatever money you have expended already on the annual report. And then on the next annual report, you'll report whatever was left that you had to spend up till September 30. And that's one of the nice things with this spreadsheet. If you keep it up to date, when it comes time to do your annual report, you'll just be able to look and say, okay, what did I spend or encumber by the 30th of June? And that's what you report up to that point. And likewise, uh, when October, October 15 comes around, all we're gonna ask for your reporting on this grant is to send us the copy of your spreadsheet showing everything that was expended or encumbered up to September 30. And we'll use that to report to the federal uh, government. We'll use that to report to IMLS. Hi guys, Gail, I have a question for you. Okay. Um, like if, if we decide to purchase something like computers, um, do we have to get permission from you guys to go ahead and purchase those or can we just purchase them and list them on this sheet? If they're for public use, yeah, then they, they should be uh, eligible. Okay. Uh, we, we don't need a separate NOO or anything like that. No, but no. I'll give you the same advice that Patricia gives you on purchasing things with Go, Go Bond. Mm-hmm. 
uh, with go bonds and with this too, I assume, uh, warranties would not be eligible as a separate uh, expense. Uh -huh. So when you go to have them expensed, uh, you can buy an $800 computer that would cost you an extra $200 if you got a warranty on it. Uh -huh. But if you can buy that same computer for $1,000 with the warranty included, then buy the $1,000 computer. Right. You just don't want that warranty listed separate. We're okay with you paying more for the computer, you know, if that's an included part of the package. Gotcha. Okay. I Thank mean, that's so much. All right, some um, complex questions have come in here. Um, I've answered most in chat. Let me know if they need more answering. Um, a computer chair that's for public use is fine. Um, salaries are cut are fine. Yes, that's a clear eligibility. Um, utility costs, I'll defer to maybe um, development staff. I think that that would fall under... Um, uh, the indirect and probably no or utilities utilities allowed i'll wait for someone from development staff to answer that um dale do you have a preference on which date goes on this spreadsheet uh the date the check is cut or the date of the order i'm going to suggest that you do the um the date that the funds are encumbered mm -hmm. yeah and by encumbered if you make a big book order and you get invoiced for the order, but it, it doesn't get to your library by June 30, if you've already encumbered that expense, then that's okay. You know, that, that kind of thing happens. And Patricia is really kind of our expert on that, that kind of question because she has that come up with go bonds a lot. But, uh, and Patricia, if you want to unmute and, pop in on how that works, that's, that's fine. Well, since I was typing and I can't type in here at the same time, uh, what was the question? Uh, okay, I see you answered one, no utility costs from go bonds. So I would assume that same rule holds for us. Uh, it was, about uh, encumbering funds, like say, if you've got a book order that you've already made, but it doesn't come in by June 30, uh, can you comment on how that would work like with uh, the go bonds and encumbering the funds? Um, well, with go bonds, it's a multi-year PO and it appears that ARPA uh, funds are multi-year. So I would assume that you could just uh, address those orders that don't come in until after June 30 on your second annual report. It's, is that what's being asked? That, that's part of it, but the September 30 deadline too is an encumbrance deadline. So what counts in go bonds for having it encumbered? Um, in go bonds, it's April one. Yep. Basically, so but that I mean that's the that is the deadline um, to get everything in. And if you don't have everything in, then you do lose access to part of the allocation. But I don't know if that would apply to these types of funds. Mm -hmm. What let me let me pose the question a little differently. What please what counts as having the funds committed? Oh, okay. Well, in the grant in the GoBond grant agreement, it allows people to be reimbursed for something that they have um, purchased, but they haven't paid for yet. Okay. And so when they get the reimbursement, they have um, two weeks to actually pay the vendor. Okay. And it just depends on whenever they get that reimbursement check because then they'll have the money to pay it. 
so it might be, it depends on how fast that gets processed. And so it could be uh, a month after you've received the uh, services or the books or whatever, or if the books haven't come in, again, I can reimburse with that caveat of what's in the grant agreement that you can, you have to pay the vendor within two weeks of receiving the reimbursement. Okay. And of course, this is going to be up front Monday. So right. uh, people will be That's, able to pay as soon as they get the invoices. Right. I'll just jump in on a couple of the staffing questions. Um, so travel expenses to conferences is fine and fees is fine. Um, the question about staff bonuses, I would really um, urge you to avoid that. Um, if you happen to give your staff permanent raises and then this uh, grant happened to cover the salary, that's fine. But just using the, the grant to, to give bonuses would um, is not territory I would ever encourage you to go into. Um, uh, let's see, there was something else. So no, no, no to utility costs. I think that's pretty clear. Um, now that's for go bonds. I, I don't mean to interrupt you, Eli, but that is just for go bonds. I don't know for state aid, for example. It does say with state aid operational costs. Yeah, I'll let Carmelita jump in on that and we can we can look at that more closely offline and let you know. Um, So, um, yeah, electric bills and phone bills, those kinds of utility costs are um, allowable for state mm -hmm. aid. And I do believe it's the same thing for ARPA as far as I'm, the guide sheet, the guideline sheet um, essentially says the same thing um, for ARPA funds as it does for state aid. So just a lot of these questions that are being asked, which we appreciate they're being asked, but a lot of the, the answers can be found in that guideline sheet too just FYI. oh thank you i can't um i've got my screen sharing so i can't see the sheet but um uh <clears throat> thank you for that um i think what what you can't do is just take a certain percentage off the top um you can't just say we're going to take 10 percent of this grant off the top to cover um uh to cover overhead but if you had a, a specific utility bill, it sounds like that would be covered. Yeah, this as long is as just for the library. Right. Yeah, yeah. Library, I think that would fall under other operational expenses uh, associated with delivery of library services to the public. So yeah, your electric bill, your phone bill for the library, as Carmelita says. Uh, and Eli, here's a little bit of a different twist on uh, librarian salaries. Uh, let's see, Natalie from Moriarty says, what about paying part-time librarians sick pay for when they have to quarantine for five days due to COVID? Um, so that I, we would need to know more about your staff policies. Um, if you do not have a sick leave policy, and you would just be giving them extra pay, then that's um, kind of goes back to that question of bonuses. Uh, you would want it to be um, as, you know, paying salaries as part of the, your normal salary package. Um, but if you want to talk through the specifics of that, let me know and we can do that. That sounds like a, a unique situation. But giving, um, giving an individual money that they would not have otherwise received um, is, uh, does not look good and is probably not allowable by the federal rules. So if it's, um, if it's something that they would have received anyway, then that's different. All right, so we've got a couple of infrastructure questions here. Um, development staff, do you have thoughts on installing uh, cable drops and camera systems? Camera systems 
are eligible from go bonds, installation and the equipment itself. As Dale has pointed out, no warranties, service contracts, maintenance contracts. That's go bonds. Any kind of equipment, um, any software that goes with the equipment, that's all covered um, through the NMAC or through the um, legislative language of go bonds. And those things would be allowable with state aid um, as well. And so since ARPA is essentially the same kind of guidelines for expenditure, that would be another operational expenditure associated with the delivery of library services. Um, but as Dale mentioned before, to just make sure that there's not separate line items for things that aren't allowed um, when paying. And Janet has a question about independent contractors. Contractors would be allowed, maybe if you gave us more information, I'm thinking of like a, um, contracting with a summer reading uh, a summer reading performer, uh, that would be allowed. Yeah, I was thinking of um, like some of our staff are independent contractors. They're hired as subs to fill in at the desk and also to provide programming like um, children's programs and that sort of thing. Oh yeah, I think that would be fine. Great. And could someone put in the chat the link to um, the website with all the um, uh, information about various grants that we provide? And again, if you have a specific question about eligibility issues, um, just do let us know and we can talk through with them, uh, talk through that with you. Question, I don't know how to get in. Okay. Um, oops, sorry, I went too far there. All right, what other um, questions do you all have? Can you hear me? Uh, I, I can hear someone. Hello. Go ahead. Hello, Mary Bederick. Hi. Hello. Hi. Uh, we have a question. We uh, had received an E-rate grant about three years ago. And uh, with it, uh, uh, fiber was provided to our community and to our nearby Pueblo but we have never been able to attach it to the library. Uh, would we possibly be able to do that with this uh, grant? Did you hear that? Yeah, yeah, I heard it. Um, probably this is not the grant that you would, um, that you would want to use. Um, it's possible that our we yeah. have a separate broadband fund, though, that might be suitable. Mm -hmm. But I would need to better understand, um, you say E-rate, um, does that mean that it went through a local school? Well, in, in a way, yes, it did. Uh, we were in partnership with the local Curie's school, and uh, they were using our facilities at the time. Uh, so the uh, the basic setup of the fiber came literally to the back door, but it was never connected to the library. It mm. can be connected to the library, but we're not really sure how to accomplish that. And it occurred to us that possibly this grant could be part of that installation. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to put you in touch with our broadband manager for that question. Okay. 
Um, and hopefully that's something we can help Excellent. you with. Thank you. Thank you very much. Eli, this is Cynthia. Hi, Cynthia. I wanted to um, suggest that they contact um, Kimball at Santa Fe Indian School to answer that question. Yeah, Kimball was part of the original project, so that's a good idea. Yeah. It's just been so long. Yeah, and we're in pretty frequent contact with Kimball as well, so if we need to all meet, we can certainly do that. Thanks, Cynthia. Um, hmm, gift cards from Amazon. I need to think a little bit more about that one. Um, are there specific rules about gift cards? Does anyone know? This is not Cynthia. allowable with Go Bonds. Eli, this is Cynthia again. Yeah. That will be Cynthia. considered as a giveaway, don't you think? Yeah. It, that's a slippery slope. I would stay away from that. Yeah. Yeah, I would think it would raise flags as well, should you ever be audited. And circling back to a question somebody was asking me about your invoices, that's part of why you should really keep your invoices and that spreadsheet uh, because it you could be audited in the future on that program and that's what you would need to go back and uh, justify what you have, a copy of your grant agreement, uh, the guidelines, the spreadsheet and your invoices. A uh, question about software. Software should be fine. Deep freeze should be fine. Um, independent cost. If you're um, buying a circulation desk from someone who's making it specifically for you, you just have to be careful. I think that it's not built in, that it's um, uh, freestanding, so it's not considered a capital improvement. Uh, but furniture for public uses is, is fine, yes. Oh, uh, we've had a couple of questions about flooring. I would assume that that's um, capital improvement, but someone can correct me. Bathrooms, I think, would also not be covered. Yeah, I guess a key thing to remember when you're using state funds, state aid, go bonds, and uh, ARPA funds is how is it benefiting the patron? Is it necessary to deliver library services? Flooring. I mean, yeah, it's nice, but it's not something that you absolutely have to have new carpeting, new flooring to deliver services. So that's something to, to consider when you're trying to decide what's allowable and what's not. How does it impact the delivery of library services? And question about El Portal. Um, Janet, if you could let me know sort of what resources you're you're looking at. Um, we're always kind of looking at um, what we can add. The problem and uh, the, the usual problem is that um, we don't want to add something this year that we don't have funding for next year. Uh, we do not have a specific plan to add something to El Portal. We are going through our LSTA evaluation right now and we'll be doing an LSTA five-year plan which many of you have already filled out the survey for and we'll be meeting with the evaluator on and that is one of the things we want to we want to look at is um, our El Portal resources. Um, who to contact? Um, you can really contact Carmelita, Dale, or myself or all three of us. Uh, Eli, I believe Janet asked earlier about a multi-year license on uh, an electronic resource. Um, 
this is uh, the question of purchasing credits from a, from a vendor. Uh, that's a pretty common common thing to do. The um, you know generally speaking, the grant would require that if you uh, purchase something, that the goods be in uh, by the end of the calendar year. Eli, this is for you. I'm going out on a limb here, um, but I, I just had a hit thought pop in my head. Mm -hmm. You can't tie this to any other grant, right? Because this is a one-time grant. Um, I'm, I was thinking more of like the rural um, uh, library grant for mm -hmm. getting others trained in that. Um, I, oh, is a use of that funds? Yeah. Um, it's true that it's possible we could use if we have extra funds. Um, one of the things we're going to need to do on our end, and one of the reasons we have a 60 day window for you to sign grant agreements um, is that we're aware that there are going to be probably a couple of libraries. We already know of one that um, are going to forego this grant. And so we do need to make sure that we uh, reallocate this funding to another person, uh, to another purpose. So, um, yeah. you know, it's possible that we could create another grant program, but to be honest, we haven't had those discussions on our end. Um, we are using some ARPA funds to establish a, a niche academy account, if you guys know what that is. No, I don't. Uh, niche academy is a, a professional development platform um, that libraries use. Um, so hopefully you'll be hearing more about that. Dale can tell you about the many months of procurement hassle that we've gone through to try to get that, but hopefully the lights at the end of the tunnel on that. Um, yeah, yeah, I can't really, I can't really give you any specific information at this point, other than the Niche Academy professional development software um, of how we would use extra funds. Eli, I have a question. This is Cynthia. Hi. So the money that, is, that the library, particular library, um, is not accepting it. I, I was under the impression that it will go equally to all libraries, those funds, and not go to state, state library. No, we're not going to. We're not going to redistribute it. The um, we just don't have the capacity to do that. Um, uh, with our current staffing levels. So we will just uh, use it for uh, a purpose that would benefit all of you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, any last questions? Yes, Ayla. <clears throat> if um, this is Tor Parker from Eunice, as far as if we use it on our utilities and internet and phone, right now it would just cover April, May, and June for this physical year. Is that correct? Um, I'm sorry, I don't think I understood that question. Why would it only be April, May, and June? Well, because well, we I'm trying to think how why I asked that question. I had it written down, but I'm trying to think why I asked it. Well, we have to read each report what we did this fiscal year is what I was getting at, but maybe I'm just getting that confused with this, uh, the state grant and aid. Mm. Yeah, so because this is a federal grant um, and because it took so long to get it to you, we're trying to give you the maximum amount of time to okay, use so it. Okay, so we'd have eight months so, we can Yeah, so it, it really goes okay. through really goes through September through right. yeah. I just wasn't so, sure if we could count yeah. it part of it this time and part of it on the next one or how. Yeah. But this would so be kept separate from our other. Yeah. Track, okay. track it on that tracking sheet. And then. Okay. Um, and on that is when yeah. we click on this on our, on this email that we got, it'll give us this web, um, the spreadsheet, or is this something we need to post yeah. to something for us to. You should already have it in that email. If you don't, let us know. Okay, I've got it. I just wasn't sure that's where we input all that so we would have it. I made yeah, a copy of it, but a, we just need yeah, to input just it save all a that. 
Okay. Right, right. Just save a copy of it locally. Okay. And then we'll ask you for it after September. Okay. Good question. Okay, well, we're going to conclude this meeting, but um, any questions we are happy to seek answers to. Uh, so please do let us know. Thank you all for coming today. Thank you. Um, and we'll see you next time. Eli, I have one more question. <laughs> <laughs> sure. um, okay, so we, we are just getting the money because um, we have the deadline of March to sign that. And so what months do, could we count if we used it for anything? What, or what are the total months that we can use the um, reporting for? Um, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October. No, it ends in September. Pretty much, um, yeah, pretty much as soon as you get the check. Okay. So as soon as, as, soon as we get your signed grant agreement, then um, we okay, have to- I hope to you already have that. I'm supposed to send it. <laughs> I took it to my, sent it to my financial officer. So, so, so hopefully y'all have it. Uh, I think we do, but I, I've, okay. I've, <laughs> I've you have plenty so to look many, at, I can't sure. remember. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Eli, okay, thank you. Uh, Eli, okay. that, that brings to mind one discussion we had. Uh, I believe it was yesterday. Uh, money being fungible. <laughs> If you have an expense going back to July 1st that you've not covered with other funds, you could count that against, uh, against this grant. So say for example, if you replaced three public computers uh, last August and you've not gotten a go bond reimbursement, you haven't, spent state grant made money on that or any other thing uh, we are happy for that to count against this amount but it it just you know keep keep your receipts put it on the spreadsheet uh, and other things so in other words something within this fiscal year that would be eligible if you haven't paid for it in another from another grant source uh, you can you can count that Dale, though, wouldn't it need to be within the federal fiscal year, so back to October 1st rather than July, to keep within those grant guidelines? Well, if I'm not mistaken, Eli, the money was allocated to us prior to that, right? Yeah, yeah, that's that's true. The man, the money was actually allocated earlier than the fiscal year, so I don't I don't think it's following the federal fiscal just one federal fiscal year like that. Um, yeah, good point. I just want to, um, I just want to, you know, we kind of touched on this earlier that, um, about reduction of local funding. Um, this grant, as with our other grants, requires that local funding be maintained. Um, so if you just use this to pay for salaries, and that reduces your amount of um, local revenue, then you could be um, in a bad situation for next year's funding. So uh, just remember that this is supposed to be uh, supplemental. So if you use this to replace regular staff salaries, then um, the local funding that should have gone to staff salary should go somewhere else then. It's not intended to just um, uh, save local revenue. If that makes sense. Eli, I have a question. This is Cynthia. Mm -hmm. So if that's the case, then what percentage of the budget can be can we utilize? Meaning utilizing it for staff salary. Uh, there's no restriction in terms of like a percentage. Um, but when we look at out when we do your state report every year and we look at how much local um, local revenue was spent for the library um, we have to show that local revenue is being maintained so and the reason for that is that um, you know state grants are meant to be supplemental and we don't want to give you a thousand dollars and then have the 
the local governments say, okay, your, uh, your funding is cut by $1,000. So um, as with most federal grants of this type, there is a maintenance of efforts requirement. So um, the way we evaluate that is, um, is through the annual report. So if you looked at your um, last year's annual report, you can see how things are reported and you can um, see how we would calculate that maintenance of effort. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And uh, every library is unique. So if any of these answers are too general and you need to talk through your unique situation, um, we are happy to do so. Any other questions? All right. Um, reminder, also spend your geobond money and all your other money. There's a lot of money this year. Please spend it all. <laughs> we don't want any of it back. We don't want to lose any geobond money because it went unspent. Um, it's a good problem to have, but I know it's a lot of work to spend, spend money, uh, especially when it's just one-time money. But uh, I thank you all and good luck and let us know how we can help. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your afternoon.